Welcome to the Jan Arden Podcast, Episode 2 on the new Women in Media Podcast Network. We're already on Episode 3. Where have you been? Oh, oh shit. That's three. Shh, damn it. Episode 3. What was Episode 1? The show must go on. Okay, and then mm-hmm. Episode 2 was Sleep. Alana. Yes. I, I, Alana, and, and we're getting, I'm, Episode 3. And that's why I need to sleep more. Exactly right. Uh, I am here with Caitlin Green and Sarah Burke. Uh, They are respectively in Toronto. I am here in Springbank, Alberta, Canada. You can just call it Sperm Bank if you want to. Everybody else does. Oh, my God. I'll never forget where where you live now that you said that. I've never even thought of that. Yeah. Sperm Bank or Spring Bank. And these are people that live in Cochrane and Balzac that are coming up with the shenanigans. So these are actual real towns in Southern Alberta. Um, Listen, it's a leap year. And I, you know, a lot of people are like, why a leap year? What does, who even cares about a leap year? What does it mean? Someone's turning five years old. (laughs) Well, someone is turning five years old. So it is a drag, I think, if you are a person that's born on the 29th of February. But, of course, NPR had an article of why do we leap day? Um, so it's the Gregorian calendar. Do you guys know why we do a leap year? No. Do you have any idea? Do you want to take a guess? I figure it's because of the moon. Am I wrong? <laughs> moon or sun related. <laughs> Here's Caitlin and her zodiac things. That's again. right. <laughs> well, I mean, it could be. Leap day means several different things to uh, a fellow named Alexander Boxer, and he is a data scientist. And uh, he's an author, among a lot of things. He does astrology. He does kind of cosmic searching for your, uh, you know. But anyway, leap year is, it's literally speaking, it's an awkward calendar hack. Awkward calendar hack. What does that even mean? I don't. What does it mean? What is happening? Tell us, Alex. (laughs) <laughs> it's aimed at making up for the fact that a year isn't a flat number of days, but more like 365 and a quarter days. Oh, so, so it's oh, about the sun, I think, more than the moon then. Ha ha. That that a sense. year is 365 and a quarter days. So every four years, we have to make up for that like t- amount of time? It's a great reminder that the universe is really good at defying our attempts to devise nice and pretty and aesthetically pleasing systems to fit into it. (laughs) It's also a great reminder that the calendar most people rely on every day is actually the product of multiple civilizations, Mm -hmm. which I do know a bit about just because Julius Caesar, I mean, there were so many different calendars, you know, based on the The summer solstice, the winter solstice. Well, you got Chinese New Year. You got yeah. What, what did you say with Jewish people? Yeah. So, like, you know, Rosh Hashanah is in September, but that's our New Year. <laughs> yeah, but and also too, like, we're in a we, we live in the land of AD. But then, like, what year is it according to the Jewish calendar? It's like totally different measurement of like centuries, even. Yeah, it's like the year is like something in the five thousands, I think. Like, yeah. So it's like I just yeah. feel that we've all never really come to a general consensus as a as a civilization on anything, which is why we just should really take away that like everything is truly meaningless. Nothing matters. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's all the time we have for today. That was Caitlin Green weighing in on leap year okay. on the Jan Arden <laughs> podcast. Um, well, it's the product of multiple civilizations, like I said, building off of each other as they share in what this Alexander calls this great undertaking of trying to understand time. So the so where did the leap year come from and what are we supposed to do with our extra day? Uh, why do we have leap years? This is the question. Most people know that a single day is about 24 hours long and that there are 365 days in a year, but actually it takes Earth. 365.243190 days. I want to talk to the people who do these calculations and figure this shit out because this just seems like all kinds of messed up stuff. <laughs> I mean, this is what pe- people enjoy doing this. That is a huge number. That's how long it takes to orbit the sun. Yeah. See? It's about it, the sun. No, it's you're right. Ding, 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 ding. You, I'm going to give you my hummus packet because <laughs> you got that right. It's always about space. Um, 
We should so actually we should have a no- It doesn't like so it doesn't take a full 365 days to orbit. So they they carry over that little piece of the day to then amount to a full day only once every 4 years. Yes. Okay. Centuries ago, people kept track of the sun's position, such as for solstice or the longest day of the year to know when to do things like plant and harvest. That yeah. was the big thing because yes. you didn't want to screw that up. No. You didn't want to plunk things in that were going to freeze two weeks later. I still hear my mother's voice to this day. Do not put anything in that garden until the end of May. Yeah. Like people stay the May long weekend, but where I live in sperm bank, that's risky <laughs> because it can freeze and it What's can snow, you've had snow in may oh, we've had snow in june we've wow. had i've had snow in june before like a lot of snow and it's that so is... hard on the trees because it busts branches off and their leaves are coming out and it's kind of a nightmare um mm. th now here we go the hebrew chinese and buddhist calendars among others have long contained entire leap months the west is no stranger oh. to leap years either the julian calendar which is julius caesar it was introduced, my God, 45 BC, included an extra wow. day every year. And he borrowed the idea from the Egyptians, but his math wasn't correct. He overestimated the solar year by about 11 minutes, leading to an, an overcorrection by about eight days each thousand years. Oh my God, who is interested enough in all this? I'm just like, days come and go, like, who cares? It's hot, it's hot, whatever. <laughs> but I just... <laughs> Uh, the reason was because I have a friend who's born on a leap year, and she has no idea why it even exists. So Does she celebrate I think her thanks birthday? to yeah, but she does it on the twenty eighth on the days in yeah. between. You know what but... she's called? Do you know what she's technically called? A leapling. Ah, isn't that cute? Some it's like people who are Earthling. born. Yeah, people who are born on the twenty ninth of February are called leaplings, and I once had a hot minute of dating a leapling, actually. See, this conversation went many places. So I, I just think it was interesting because I was wondering about it. She was asking me like a week ago and I'm like, I have no idea. And I'm sorry that this is happening to you. It's like being born on Christmas day because yeah. you yeah. literally miss out. You, you kids, it's such a big day to have a birthday somewhere and the Christmas and and to have everything happen on the same day is kind of a ripoff. Moving on. Thank you very much. Uh, you can write in. We will have Leap Year uh, merch coming to you at no point in this uh, podcast uh, We're over at all. It we will never, it's done. We will never, ever speak of this again. Um, would you go to a music festival called the Outlaw Festival? It's happening this year. Willie Nelson. This is, yes, Willie Nelson, yeah. Bob Dylan, John Mellencamp are three of the headliners. Yeah. This sounds like there's going to be so much dope. Like you're <laughs> you're going to be high just through osmosis if you take if you go to this if out the Outlaw Festival. So this is a traveling festival that actually goes on tour every year. It's come through Toronto at Budweiser Stage before, so Willie Nelson and his family like curate the lineup. And yeah, there's been like great Canadians that they've put on um, as some of the openers, like Jessica Mitchell, one of my girlfriend's um, singer songwriter, opened. She said, I got to open for Willie Nelson. So cool. That is really great. I opened for Bob Dylan. I think you I did. did. Yeah, five or six shows for him in the 90s. How high were you? Uh, I wasn't high at all. Uh, okay. I didn't, I've never <laughs> smoked dope. I've never been a dope person. I, I, that's, that's not true. I'm lying. And I've, I've talked about this on the show before. My friend <laughs> Teresa and I, when we were like 18, we smoked pot at a party. And I feel like it was hash because they were hot knifing it on, you know, those coily okay. stoves and they stuck the knives in there and then the knives okay. heated up and then they took the little tiny piece of hash, put it between two hot, hot knifing. Mm -hmm. God, listen to me. And then they had <laughs> cut the bottom off of a big liter thing of Coke, a Coke bottle or a Pepsi bottle. Oh, and then the you old water bottle it bong. In. Yeah. Well, there was no water in the bong. You you just breathed it through. You captured well, the smoke. Like a yeah, like okay, a funnel. Okay. And then, if you were really clever, you turned to your colleague beside you and you blew your smoke that was in your lungs so into their mouth and they breathed it in because, God forbid, you want to waste any hash. You're supposed to get more high from that than smoking it yourself when it's like second hand. Old, those are all old wives' tales, I feel like. They're like, oh, you get more high from coughing. I'm like, okay, well, you just took too big of a hit. That's why you're so <laughs> high. It has nothing to do with coughing. <laughs> 
but like oh my god have yeah. you i once saw someone do hot knives and then they were they had an old like a, a jacques cousteau era like 1920s scuba diving mask like a whole oh thing god. with like a big hose it was very steampunk and they took this hit and the whole mask filled with smoke and i feel like this person was never the same again in their life <laughs> oh god i kind of want to know about everyone's first time now caitlin well oh, smoking weed Oh, I don't remember. Jan's unimpressed. She's like, no, no, no. I no, I mean, no. When, when do, have you? Do you smoke weed now? Do you do any edibles or anything like that? I mean, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. Like for sleeping been, or oh, presently, um, not really. I used to take. I used to smoke more, and then uh, I stopped for a while because it was making me kind of paranoid. I once ate a cookie that gave me like the worst eight hours of my life. So I was I like, I had that I'm... too. Yeah. So, so what? Are... What happens? When you're too high, what happens for those eight hours? Is it just paranoia? Are you begging a friend to take you to emergency? Are you just like, I need this to end now? So what? I literally was in the, I, so it, it kept, I kept getting higher and higher and higher at the point that I thought I should be like coming down. And then finally I was like, I got to take a shower. And I took a shower and I was having like what looked like a like a rape shower in the movies where you're like like sitting on the floor of the shower being like what is happening to me like i'm like and then kyle came into the bathroom and was brushing his teeth and he was like hey and he said i was quiet and then he said the tone of voice said that i was either going to tell him to like call an ambulance or like tell him i needed him to get me out of the shower and I was like, I need you to like get me out of the shower. And he had to wrap me up in a towel and we watched Seinfeld bloopers for an hour to get me to come back on track. Because I just had this pervasive feeling of existential dread that would not subside. And the thing is, like any substance on earth, including hot peppers or even water, the poison is in the dose. So all it is is that you just, I had too much. So now I would be way more careful. I know I'm at a, I'm a huge lightweight. I know exactly what kind of like strain I would want. So now I would be far more measured with my approach, but I was just <laughs> in my twenties and I ate a whole cookie that my friend made. Like, what was I thinking? Yeah. I, I would imagine it would be unbelievably frightening. It was terrible. And I was the mis it, and the mistake people make, and I don't know anything about pot. I really don't. But I think people that are newbies to it that are smoking that pot and they're like that age old conversation. Do you feel anything? Well, I don't really feel anything. And they take another hit because they don't, they're not aware of the time and how it works. Like, you know, you need 20 minutes for this stuff to get into your blood system, to get into your brain. So by the time they've taken that second hit, they're, they're more than going to, they're going to be high enough just from whatever they did. And then it just goes really sideways. Like, I feel bad for people. And people do end up in emergency oh, yeah. smoking too much weed. And I would imagine with the edibles, you have to be really mindful that you take them and you're not feeling anything. Because it's not like taking a hit of whiskey. That's pretty immediate. Like, if yeah, you have a big hit forever. of whiskey. It does. So you're, you're a, a gummy person, right? I love a joint so much, but it's not good for my little asthmatic lungs. But okay. I like the I like the joint because I can measure it, and I know like within the fifteen minutes, I'm like, okay, here we go, right? Whereas, so what is that? Two puffs? Like like half a little joint, half a little joint for me. I I use I use that more than I drink. I would say, um, but for an edible, if I were to take it at like eight o'clock at night sometimes i don't feel the effects until 11 30 and i'm lying in bed like oh my god what is, is happening that's what i'm saying it's like you it's too long yeah so now the edibles come like there are gummies that come in like tiny tiny almost like micro doses and i would say that that is the way to go because then you can appropriately gauge you where just have you're a restful at. sleep yes 100 percent. i just yeah. think that we got into this weird world early on at least as a millennial it was like people at parties would like think you have to smoke a whole joint and you're like what then you're going yeah, to the hospital for an existential crisis or if you've ever gone to amsterdam <laughs> people people from other countries where they have really strict marijuana rules yeah. go there and they go to town and the number of people who i feel like needed a spirit guide that i saw <laughs> lurking around the canals after dark like hopelessly staring off and having a crisis like numerous people i witnessed doing that and i wanted to go over to them as like a friendly canadian where this is more part of our culture and be like you need to go back to your hotel and order room service and go to bed like this is a <laughs> you're in for eight hours like this is not a small time commitment if you've gotten to this point yeah 
for sure. Well, a friend of mine who I shall not name <laughs> uh, that I work with went to Emerald Lake Lodge and they thought uh-huh. he had never done mushrooms before. His friend had done them, I think, quite a few times. And he got them from a reputable mushroom place. Like, I don't know what that even means. But anyway, <laughs> they they did they them. Did. They had a fire in the room. They thought being outdoors was probably yeah. a, a great place to do this, not knowing what was going to happen. You're listening to the Jan Arden Podcast, by the way. I'm here with Caitlin Green, Sarah Burke. Um, we're sober, anyway, by the way. yeah, and we're not yeah. stoned. You'd think we were. Whoever did leap year was stoned out of their fucking minds. I'll tell you <laughs> that sure. right now. They were just, and who was ever calculating that in 45 BC? It took them a long time they didn't to calculate. Calculators. I don't. You know what? That's a whole. I feel stoned talking about this <laughs> because okay. I don't understand how they did the calculations. So anyway, moving on. So they took the mushrooms. In their little foil packet, you, you put them in your mouth. I guess you eat them and you swallow them with water, tea, or whatever. You're actually yeah, eating little dried mushrooms. Peanut Wait. butter would be a good idea. And they, they were fine. Nice. And they sat there and they watched the fire and the trees. And and they felt really great. My friend felt great. It was just like, he's like, I wasn't even sure if I was feeling anything. But I didn't take any more because I knew, no, this is, his friend is like, sometimes it takes a while to kick in. They go for dinner in this really beautiful mountain lodge. They order, and my friend is like, Jan, I, I don't know what to tell you, but my fork was moving, my, the plates were moving, the waiter was a monster, the, the, the windows like turned into like liquid pools of, of like mercury, and it was, it was so, he said, all I, could, all I could do was hang on for dear life. He said, had his friend not been there going, you're okay, you're okay. And the waiter thought they were from a, another realm. Like, I, I can't imagine anything worse than being in public. Like, they said even the money, like when they went to pay, the credit cards got really long. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're tapping and the credit card is like eight feet long and you're tapping the machine. I would call 911. I know that. Uh, the way I think, I couldn't do it. So they'd never done mushrooms before and they started with like a full cap? I think his friend had. Listen, yes, I don't know. He, but but it was, I don't know if he would ever do it again. I, I, I think my friend has said, I don't think I would ever I do it again. That. But he said, having said that, he said it was yeah. the most amazing experience I've ever had in my life yeah, on a drug. Yeah. And, you know, it was, it just was and now I guess, you know, you would know what to expect, but I, I don't know. Did I, you I, see Mr. Buble take over that press conference at the All-Stars weekend? With the microdose? He yes. Talked, he had taken microdoses of mushrooms before he went on the ice and that he was still on the mu- microdoses during his press conference. And was he, he was, kidding? I don't know, but he was, he didn't, he seemed inebriated in some fashion and he was so much fun and he was so funny. And he just talked about it in such a normal, like, Canadian way. I loved it. And then he came on um, the morning show, the, the, for- the morning show that shall the not former. be named. The morning show that's they who shall not be named. Uh, <laughs> and the interview with him was so much fun. And I talked to him about microdosing off the air. And, like, he was just, like, he was just great. And I think that that, again, is the key. It's, like, it's all the dose. It's, it's the people the who take yeah. a full giant cap or multiple caps and they eat it on a piece of pizza and then they're like oh i'm gonna go watch you know dark side of the moon and or dark side of oz or whatever like that's you're just you're intentionally getting very very high so if you microdose it's fine and it just gives you the giggles but like visual stimuli it's kind of (laughs) that's the whole point of doing mushrooms like Like in this condo I, I did a dose with a friend one time and I thought I was in Super Mario world. Like, oh, yeah. like the walls were doing things and everything was messed up. And I had so much fun that yes. like, like I kept, I could not hold my composure. So I kept leaving the room to go to the bathroom, like thinking, oh, I'll be fine. I'll get back my composure and then I'll return to the room. I couldn't leave the bathroom because I just kept laughing. Well, <laughs> like and sometimes and I would, I've done them when I've been like at a party or at like a, like a seeing a DJ and all like when you're in the dj sphere it's like lights and sound and dancing so it's hard to gauge like how 
much visual hallucinatory things are happening but i would not my test was always go to the bathroom and then go pee and if the floor is breathing <laughs> you're on the right track but that was always my like gauge for it but again like i'm with you sarah like i always found that very fun but i think i went into it sort of like eyes wide open so to speak where i expected yeah. that that would happen the I funniest... hear... oh sorry go ahead i once had it where everything became cubist oh i was going to see a dj and then i left the dj and the second i put my foot outside of the club to get into my uber everything became cubist outside a square so, uber came to get me square wheels on the uber square man driving this is like that episode of the simpsons, simpsons. where he's in like <laughs> exactly and i got back home to my condo and the sliding doors at the entrance to my condo were locked were jammed open which happens periodically at my condo and sometimes all you have to do is haul on them and they slide back into place so i get out of the uber the cube uber in my cube land and i see the door <laughs> open and i think oh i'm going to be helpful and like keep the building safe and try to unjam them we also have a concierge who's used to only seeing me go to work at four in the morning like sober <laughs> as a judge going to work he then sees me get out of an uber at 2 a.m and try to start un sticking the front front sliding doors of our condo and in my mind a little cube man came over and was like hello the doors are broken like we don't need you to fix them <laughs> <laughs> no i was gonna say a year ago like i'm coming up on a year ago my boyfriend at the ladies time and gentlemen i hope you're enjoying this as much as i am <laughs> uh we went to my parents cottage and we had some we had some mushrooms we were like okay we'll see what's up whatever and on like a Google Chromecast screen where it just flips through images, yes. there was this like peacock screen. And like, you know how the peacocks have all the eyeballs? Yeah. Okay, so we On their got, feathers. Yes. On their we got, feathers. We got really afraid of peacocks. And then when we were going to bed, we go up to like one of the bedrooms in the condo, or sorry, in the cottage. And there's art on the wall, which I've never, ever even noticed that my parents put up, but it was a peacock. So we were like, they're following us. They're following us. And I'm now terrified. I'm now terrified of peacocks. I can't look at them. So what, yeah. what is your heart doing during this? Like what? Laughing. It, 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 no, but it's your, I mean, your, your physical, heart, like R, RPMs, like how many beats per minute? And I would you know ever better feel if I like... had an aura ring. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't have wearables. It, did did it sure. feel poundy or like, no. uh, so it's not, it's not a physical, like if you did cocaine, your heart would be going a million beats a minute. Right. And it could conceivably kill you. This now, is a very, this to me has always been a very chill time. Again, mind you, I'm not one to like eat a ton at once and then become overwhelmed as your friend experienced at that beautiful lodge. I will but take I, I don't think it was a ton, but I don't I think it was that. more it was more than than he should have taken. Yeah. So I'm a I'm a take a very, very small responsible amount and then keep it going. And if I eventually over the course of the night end up going from microdosing to macro dosing myself, at least I've had fair warning. Like at least I know yeah. what I've I've had a worse experience like being too high on an edible versus shrooms. Same, same. The For worst sure. experience yeah. of my life is being too high on weed. So like I don't yeah. think weed is like despite the fact that it is legal, um and mer mushrooms seem to occupy this legal kind of gray space in Canada. Yeah. I do think that um weed has given me the worst times of my life oh well like bringing bringing this back to your willie nelson concert I just, my willie I just to, uh, my willie nelson concert yes this is where, where this whole thing started <laughs> where were um, you going i don't know but but willie nelson is 90 years old yeah uh-huh or he's 91 maybe here let me do the google yeah let okay see. let do the google but i mean there's something to be said. This guy 90. has had no stress, really. He's born in 1933. He, yeah, he I does. Love it. He lives his life his own way. Um, but what a lineup. Uh, Robert Plant, Alison Krauss are also going to be at this outlaw. And like you said, it's like a moving feast. This this yeah. thing moves around and there'll be a few different artists, I would imagine, depending on the geography. Yep. But uh, there's going to be a lot of weed there. Now, I would hate that. I don't like being in a crowd mm -hmm. breathing in weed to me it's like yeah, yeah. and i don't want to sound like debbie downer Janny downer and um just the whole idea of like breathing that in and people can get stoned from secondhand pot it is a possible thing it's just like uh 
you know, but if you're standing there with everyone smoking weed, so I wouldn't even like that. Like I hate going to a casino where they're smoking. Cigarette smoke is cigarette smoke worse, I find. bugs yeah. me. Weed smoke does not bug me really. Yeah, same, same. Maybe, maybe it's, like a lot of so the time pungent. if it's both. You, like in Toronto, I cannot walk down Queen Street and not be really? walking through. It's like to me, I liken it to walking through farts. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what it feels like. I'm going down Queen Street. I'm going to get my little goddamn vegan dish Burger. from somewhere. And my favorite place, Parka, closed. My my vegan place on Queen Street. God, things go up and down in that town. They're open for like for six you. months and then they're gone. But especially when you're like, it's your destination. I was uh, coming from a flight and I just thought, oh, I'll go to Parka and I'm going to get that broccoli thing and blah, blah, blah. And it was gone. Closed Aww. permanently. I hate that. But I hate walking through farts more. And I liken the pot smoke to doing exactly that. And there's a pot store. Queen Street is now. And I love you, Toronto. I love you so much. But it's bubble tea on Queen Street oh, and yeah. marijuana stores. Queen Queen West and to a lesser extent East like been overrun with, yeah. with weed stores because of the way the Ontario government rolled out the legalization of marijuana. It's just littered with crap. It's like it's the equivalent of ads for legalized gambling sites on a sports broadcast. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's just all you see. So I don't know how they're all profitable, but yeah, there's way too many of them. The smell is strong. I certainly wouldn't want to be smelling that frequently in like my building or my home, but it doesn't bother me too much. It hasn't bothered me too much when I've been at concerts, mm. but. And it is there. It's very prevalent in shows now. Yeah. There's no but... way around it. Like years ago, it, back in my day, you would have had a security guard grab you and remove you. Like if they caught you smoking yeah. meat yeah. and now Server just got kicked out. Yeah, there's just no way they can they can keep track. They can't they can't control, you yeah. know, eighteen thousand people at Beyonce that are you know either on gummies. Uh, uh, like people normally like to go see music stoned. I mean, that's just. I ask my audience once in a while, is there anybody here high and the whole or drunk? <laughs> and everyone's like, woo! I'm like, holy uh, shit! Speaking I said, of which, did you not have a little announcement this morning? Well. I, was it this morning? Rick Mercer and I are going out on tour, and we're starting you in Newfoundland, and we end in um, Victoria or Vancouver, one of those one of those cities. But we're going right across the the country. You the cannot country. smoke dope in the audience; it's a yes. controlled environment. <laughs> well, you can. I don't know what the people around you will feel like. I don't think. I think our audience is not the pot smoking demographic. I mean. Kick me if I'm wrong here. Do you, maybe they are. Rick Mercer's fans? I bet you they're stoners. Sorry, Rick. I bet you we have a lot of stone people that love you. Maybe. I, I mean, Jan, you also have a lot of stone people who love you. Just saying. I feel like but, it's also, you guys are funny and people who like smoke weed are like, they're lollers. They like to have lols. So I feel as though. <laughs> lols. She, LOL. Is that right? Am I, am I, catch, am I catching what you're throwing down here? Yeah. yeah. Lollers. Oh, <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I'm so, so I, glad yeah. that our podcast can be educational to the folks that need to to be hip, to yeah. stay in the current <laughs> that is flowing through our culture. Lawlers, I learned something here today. <laughs> but yeah, we're going across the country. I think uh, Live Nation is putting the tour on, and tickets are available now, I think. Yeah, uh, we can put a link in the show notes. Yeah, we can put a link in the show notes, but I'm really looking forward to it. I really, I, I do. I love Rick. And it is, I'm not singing. A lot of people have asked me, are you going to sing? I might break into Moon River. I don't know. It depends on the night. But uh, we're, we just, we sit in chairs. We take a whole bunch of questions from the audience. It's very interactive. But I think the world needs something like this. Yeah. These are really difficult times. And sometimes it's nice to hear a conversation and how people connected and all our experiences on the Rick Mercer report and just uh, stuff we've done. We've done a few corporate jobs together, and they're just so... You always have fun. Like, we have such a great time. And uh, the four that we did before Christmas, which were very much attached to a book that he had out and my novel that I had coming out, but people came, uh, basically, they each got a book, but it was so great to hear people laugh for 90 minutes. Uh, yeah. It was just laughter, and it was so... I don't know. We, I always leave, I leave feeling high. There's something about laughing and that serotonin. Natural high. And you see people funnel out of these, these, you know, these theaters and they just, 
physically feel better. And nothing feels as good as a laugh. It's, and that's the truth. So yeah, come and see us. When you guys are on tour together, do you do meet and greets now? Or are you still saying, nah? I don't think there's meet and greets. I think it's too risky. Yeah. You know, if, if one of us got COVID, we'd have to shut the whole thing down. Although people are working through things like that. I don't want to give Rick Mercer COVID. He's, you know, and, and uh, he's already had COVID. He doesn't need it again. And yeah. I don't, I still haven't had it. Am I? Do oh, mate, that's, maybe you are like, maybe you should donate your blood to science. Maybe you're I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, do I, you guys I, get like, hit on by people when you're on tour? Like, do people shoot their shot with you guys? I have to wonder. Like, do people, like, approach you at, like, a hotel bar or, like, when, when the audience does Q&A, are people ever like, I'm going to ask you out? Because, like, people have asked you out via our DMs for this show. <laughs> yeah, we, we see all of it, by the way. If I... you're asking Jan out, we see it. It's just Sarah and I seeing it and being like, thanks for your interest in the podcast. <laughs> well, thank you for protecting me. I... I am unaware. I mean, I, I've in audience in the audience. I've had drunk people ask me to marry them. The, the audience laughs. Blah blah blah. I think yeah. Rick could speak to that. I bet you he gets hit on. I have never yeah. had anyone come up to me and hit on me in real time in real life. Uh, I've had lots of very deranged, very sad letters and of people that are clearly not like the not M &M well. Stand. Yeah, stands. Do you recall the person that I had in my driveway uh, this summer? Oh, yes. That's and right, holding yeah. up some kind of a painting. And I had to have mm -hmm. my neighbor come down Boy. and ask them to leave. Uh, I just don't even know how they figured out where I lived or anything. So those things are like discontur un disconcerting. Those things are very disconcerting. <laughs> but I... Uh, yeah, I I don't it's I don't think I put off that vibe. But thank you, Caitlin. Speaking Caitlyn. of this, uh, just to piggyback on that question a little bit. So um, yesterday I did an interview with Costco about podcasting, which is so random. Ooh. But the per the person who did the interview um, is a Montrealer and named Wendy, and she listens to the podcast. Hi, Wendy. And, Hi, Wendy. Uh, she, she said Hi. that she said that there was um, a point where you had a very good like relationship with a radio host in Montreal and everyone thought you were dating Terry DeMonte. Oh, I love Terry. See? Yeah. I love she's Terry. Like, Terry. She... I love Terry. And, and he's, he's yeah. like a brother to me. He's one of the most infectious. Um, that doesn't sound like the word word. His yeah. laugh is in <laughs> his laugh is in fact, he's not infected. He is <laughs> incredibly smart. He's very, he, he's a wonderful interviewer. He's one of the best, interviews several times in my career i've probably talked to him for 25 years isn't that funny that yeah. thought it was together listen any yeah. any woman that stands next to me i i they they're suddenly in a relationship with me like i'm i'm, <laughs> I'm surprised you guys haven't been asked are you like are you guys going out with jan like it, it's so <laughs> weird that way i had a, fe a very young female manager years and years ago nikki hi nikki and <sighs> she was constantly inundated with people asking if we were together Really, and, and just these rumors and stuff like that. Cynthia Loist has oh, yeah. absolutely yeah. had people saying, "Are you having an affair yeah. with Jan Arden? You guys just seem like really close, yeah. and you have that thing going on between you." <laughs> Cynthia loves it. She goes, "Oh, I love it. I think it's so great." She plays it up. Yeah, yeah. There was one uh, Jewish dinner where, like, you know, the whole family's over, all the aunts, all the uncles, and I brought my roommate at the time, who was another broadcaster, uh, a reporter for Global News, and my sister's new guy she was dating was like, "So, how long have you two been together?" And I was like, um, <laughs> six years, six years. Yeah. I was going to say, that's very, you know, that's very forward thinking of him. He wasn't like, oh, it's like back in the day when you brought yeah. your roommate to dinner or family dinners for like 10 years and no one yeah. asked you anything. <laughs> yeah. So, so funny. Poppy's looking at me. I'm sorry. I keep calling you my dead dog's name. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. God. Sorry. What else was on the agenda today? Well, we I just, to... well, listen, this is a big, big story. Okay. Huge. Tell us. Tell and us. I can't believe it's taken me this long. The the last Hooters in the world closed down this month. And uh, some of the regular fellas had a vigil for it uh, somewhere in the United States of America. And uh, they were out there with candles. It was very earnest. Thoughts and prayers. They, it was thoughts and prayers for, for Hooters. But folks, if you have always dreamed of going there, if you've dreamed of being a server at Hooters, 
Now, the rumor has it that back in the 80s and 90s, the management would pay for women to have a breast augmentation. They, if you, if you were a server at Hooters and you wanted bigger bosoms, the management would undertake that uh, payment. That's crazy. I'm not, that's not, I'm not, I'm not kidding you. That's a that's a very that's a generous um expense to cover because that would have been Thousands. a lot. Of, you could go to university. I mean, but Sarah, that's all. Those are the only two things you need in this world, according to the staff, the staff at Hooters. Hooters. <laughs> that's how well, you sell chicken mace. The, can you hear the dog? Can you yeah. hear him? Poppy. Well, like, I mean it. Stop it. It is it's minus twenty two here, by the way. So last week it was plus ten. There was people in shorts or they had outdoor patios open last week. There was people dining outside. Um it was freaky. It actually frightened me thinking about please my trees, please my little fruit trees, don't but put your little buds out yeah, there. For- Do not, don't poke your little green little leaves out there because it will kill them. Mm-hmm. And it is a huge issue. I know now I'm really starting to sound like this raging crone coming out of the trees with my stick, you know, with these foreboding, <laughs> these foreboding messages. Uh, it's, it's, no, it's not good. It's not good that it's hot. It's not good that you're out in your shorts. It's a terrible, terrible thing. Holy it's stick. Helpful. Yeah. <laughs> I could kill don't my plant, apple trees. Don't plant your bulbs before the May long. <laughs> Thank you. No, it's fine. I'll accept all those things. You wait till you're 61, Caitlin. <laughs> Between the two of you, I would love to do like an over under, like how many times Caitlin talks about like astrology or zodiac signs. Like in our text messages in the last week, I think there's been three times you've brought it up. That's right. And, and Jan saying the, the crone in the trees. That's become like a new favorite of yours. Well, it, it, I do enjoy it. So Poppy. You cannot go out. It's 22 below. You will perish. So anyway, um, what was I even talking about? What was I talking about? Oh, the for- the last the Hooters to ever exist has closed. Okay. And people getting breast augmentations. But I'm telling yeah. you, it is a, a... Poppy wants them. I, I think they, they should have shot some sort of a reality episode, even if it was a standalone for Webb, about the men, the horny men who held a vigil for the last Hooters. Like, who are these people? Well, they were they were devastated. It was like the closing down of a of the Museum of Natural History. Jeez. Staying there, going, what a what a loss to the community. Like these guys, really. I think it was West Virginia. So no. I hate to even bring that up, but I think it was West Virginia. No, and no. one other thing. You know, before we go, because we're we're approaching like the 40 minute mark, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about one of the most exciting things to happen to hockey card collectors really in the last 75 years. A case of unopened 1979 hockey cards from Saskatchewan sold for over, how much do you think? Hmm. How much do you think? A case of unopened hockey cards. And if you're, five million dollars. Wow, well, I underestimated that. <laughs> a Saskatchewan family just turned a case of hockey cards into millions of dollars. Around 1 a.m. Eastern on Sunday, bidding came to a close for a highly touted case filled with thousands of unopened 1979-1980 OPG brand hockey cards. You used to get a really stale stick of gum in there, in the OPG. And uh, that's a cute name for a dog. OPG! Or a little what bird, a budgie. Oh, peachy! Uh, anyway, not I'm not high. <laughs> the, there's a sport card specialist. His name is Jason Simmons. A Dallas-based heritage auctions that sold the card says the family was over the moon about the sale. The family has chosen to remain anonymous, as would I. Um, I was texting with them last night. We stayed up until about one in the morning when the bidding ended. So it's crazy because the thing is the box is unopened. So based on statistics, they are assuming that a certain number of these boxes will contain Gretzky's rookie season yes. card. Yeah. So but it's it's storage wars kind of where they're assuming it's in there. They figure there's at least a few, hence the valuation on the cards themselves. But imagine you open up this case and there's none or there's only one. Like I mean 
what if that happened? I don't even know if that's possible, but I just thought, you know, sight unseen, not even unpackaged. It's not like somebody has guaranteed bought those cards. They're just banking on a number being there. And I, I hope for the the buyer that it is. The Canadian because... one, the Canadian one, a, a, an American and a Canadian were duking it out. It started with 15 bidders okay, and then got down to 4,180,000 Canadian dollars. Um, and, and it's exactly what you said. They're hoping that there's a rookie Gretzky. A, a couple. Um, anyways, I, I wonder if we'll even know. Like, would this guy be too embarrassed to say, actually, it was all Phil Esposito? I don't know. <laughs> was he even alive then? Was he even still playing hockey in 1979? Um, anyway, I just thought that was really interesting. You never know what you're going to find in your attic like people this woman uh, like a month ago i just read about it she's a i have my friend leah is huge uh she goes to value village she goes whatever that word is they they go and buy stuff there dumpster divers no god let's go like, do um, that she didn't... thrifting i know Thri okay, sorry I, I, I could not think of the word so this woman buys this glass it was four dollars or five dollars at a value village and she sold it for one hundred thousand dollars it was a really Holy. really rare piece of pottery um i don't know what made her look into it and go to a specialist but she just said when i bought it i just knew there was something really special about it she goes i just wanted to get it i wanted to spend my five bucks and get it the hell out of the store because she just i don't know if she knew something about this stuff but there's there's any time I've ever gone with Leah to a value village and we hit everyone in Calgary. When she comes to visit me, we hit one in the Northeast. We hit the one in the Southeast. We hit, hit one uh, going out towards Banff. She hits them all and she beelines it. She knows what she's looking you for. You just she go knows... pee at these spots. You're like, okay, bathroom break. <laughs> but I mean, I, I, I just, they're packed. The value villages are packed. Wow. More and more women are thrifting clothes, which I think is fantastic. Um, or sustainable. Oh my God! There, there's there's entire there's a, s places the size of small countries that are filled with billions of pounds of of thrown out textiles and clothes and stuff like that. Anyway, I hate to end this uh, podcast on that. We're not going to end it there. Ha where are we going to end it? You tell with me where we're going to end this with listener comments. We have some. Oh my God! I'm ready. I've never okay. been so excited. Okay, <gasps> Lisa, Lisa wrote us. I never DM, but felt compelled today. I listened to your podcast at 4.30 in the morning. I woke up crying and knew this would take me out of grief and offer some kind of happiness. We had to say goodbye to our sweet pup, Maggie, of 17 and a half years yesterday. Mm -hmm. Your podcast always makes me smile and reminds me that we all have immeasurable strength and resilience. In time, I will get through this. And for right now, it's okay to feel how I feel with a heart. So, Lisa... We got you. Lisa. That's so nice. I'm we have one more for Caitlin. Dog. Okay. Bye. Okay, so this one's from Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. I was with a company for 20 years and ended up in a restructuring. I was devastated. It took a while to work through all the emotions. That was six years ago. My life took a completely different trajectory mm -hmm. on a chance meeting two years ago. You never know what's around the corner, so keep yourself open to opportunities. I'm now in a great place. Just keep moving forward. Amazing things will happen. Just believe. We are getting t-shirts made. We are right now in the design phase. <laughs> and, and once a week, and I'm pledging this to you now because I am that generous. Once a week, we are going to award a t-shirt, either a Toodly Doo t-shirt or a Jan Arden podcast, the Jan Arden podcast show with, with Caitlin and Sarah, Somebody's going to get a, a t-shirt for a, the best voice note of the week. So if that doesn't give you incentive to speak <laughs> once, what an interesting foray into the world of culture. And I'm glad we had the, the getting high discussion because I've always been kind of curious about you girls. I, this is, I'm going to spend mm -hmm. this, I'm going to dedicate myself 2024 to getting to know you guys really well. Oh, God. You know, I think <laughs> next week we might even bring up virginity. Like, I feel like it's a topic that I know we've talked about it before. You know that I lost my virginity on a waterbed. There's no secret there. Caitlin and is I, the only one who hasn't told her story. You've heard I about think my. I did. We don't have really? Do not bring it up now. <laughs> we have okay. to, next week. We're, listen, thank you to all our listeners. Thank you to all the subscribers. 
um, we're just, we're so thrilled to be on this new journey. And uh, once again, Caitlin Green, thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope your child is not a snot box this week. I hope he's coming around the corner. Thank you. And yeah, he's doing pretty good. He's, he's relatively healthy, but I can't knock on every piece of wood or I don't know. Okay. I feel like I don't even want to say that, but yes. Okay. Okay. And uh, Sarah, no dating stories that we need to know? Well, golfing season isn't even in yet. You can't even golf. You can't yeah. go on an eight-hour date. Hold out. Hold out for spring. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, listen, you're listening to the Jan Arden Podcast. We're so grateful to you. You can hit all the subscribe buttons you want. You can leave us a, you can leave us a, a five-star review. That's what I would do if I were you. I would leave us a five-star review. And when you hit the subscribe button, we'll just pop up in your folder. You won't even have to look for us. You won't have to search. We'll just be there week after week waiting to talk to you about very important things. We'll see you next time. Do a gummy if you <laughs> feel up to it. I'm going to just do one that's licorice flavored and that has no uh, effects on me at all. THC. <laughs> no, I want none of that. So listen, it's great to be sober. I got to go deal with my dog. Totally do. We'll see you next time. <laughs>